What's up? How are you guys today? The gluten intolerance movement seems to have graduated to an anti-carbohydrate movement, so I might be a little bit behind on this. Apparently, getting people to go gluten-free, follow paleo diets, wasn't enough to fix their health. So the dietary douchebags in charge of the media are now saying, oh, it's a carbohydrate issue, that's the real problem. Problem being, obesity, heart disease, cancer, diabetes, all of these degenerative diseases that are so mysterious, we don't know how to fix them. It's really the agrochemicals, the herbicides, pesticides, fungicides, insecticides, antibiotic residues, synthetic hormones, all of these poisons plaguing our food and water supply. Yes, yeah, standard American dieters do consume large amounts of gluten in the form of processed wheat, but that's like singling out saturated fat as a problem in meat, and we all know how that went. It was a big lie that has cost a lot of people their health. And the big thing they don't mention is when you consume gluten, it's typically also in the presence of refined sugar, vegetable seed oils, very inflammatory things, as well as chemicals and preservatives added to what is essentially junk food disguised as a dietary staple. So instead of telling the truth and explaining what is exactly wrong with the food, they want to keep as much money in their pockets as possible. As these nutritionists, dietary gurus, like leaders in the space, figure things out, those truths end up being suppressed until the mainstream is able to provide their own alternative products. A good example of this is the keto diet being touted as super dangerous for years and years and years, maybe even dozens of years, but suddenly, oh, now there's celebrities and mainstream news articles about keto and it, hey, keto's good now. Hey, buy our products, buy our keto bullshit bars that we can't sell. The more people that are kept sick, unhealthy, poisoned, the more power they have. If you understand this, you become skeptical of anything, you start doing your own research, and you ultimately figure out that the majority of these big dietary trends such as gluten-free, are small truths in a web of lies. And one thing I've seen as that mainstream BS solution to this is, oh, just consume glycine powder, that's great. You know, they're shilling their supplements that they wanna sell instead of telling you what you actually need to do. So I dug up four studies here that help us explain why certain things are being said in the mainstream and, and how they're actually wrong. No effects of gluten in patients with self-reported non-celiac gluten sensitivity after dietary reduction of fermentable, poorly absorbed short-chain carbohydrates. The study says, in a placebo-controlled crossover rechallenge study, we found no evidence of specific or dose-dependent effects of gluten in patients with non-celiac gluten sensitivity placed on a diet low in FODMAPs. So the study showed that a high gluten diet was just as inflammatory as a high whey protein diet. It seems like two fairly different foods, huh? So the conventional gluten, as well as conventional whey, both have some significant inflammatory factors to them, whether it's being sprayed with large amounts of agrochemicals, grown with poor quality water, GMO stuff, or in reality, people's digestive systems are so messed up from all of this stuff that they have a lot of food intolerances. People are poisoned to the point of candida, gut dysbiosis, microbiome imbalance, very, very poor health. So the next study is observations on the effect of glyphosate-based herbicide on ultrastructure SEM and enzymatic activity in different regions of alimentary canal and gill of Chana punctatus, uh, which is, for lack of better terminology, a really ugly fish. And I would read the excerpt here, but it's just, it's, it's so much science gibberish and nonsense. The point is, the entire breathing and digestive system of the fish was destroyed using glyphosate, the same glyphosate that is being sprayed on the bread and food people are eating. This destruction of the digestive system is similar to the symptoms complained about by celiac patients as well as gluten intolerant people. 
Glyphosate prevents the liver from utilizing vitamins or detoxing and can completely wipe out the good bacteria in your gut. And if you want to see how bad glyphosate is, it basically just like literally caustically burns and destroys cells throughout the stomach. It's really, really bad. Um, I mean, can it be compared to drinking bleach? Probably. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll read a little bit of that for you guys. Severe damage, shrinkage, and degeneration of pentagonal cellular contour of stratified epithelial cells. Shrinkage of SEC resulting in the degeneration of micro ridges. Slight necrosed and distorted SEC was observed in esophagus. Severe mucus secretion was observed in stomach. Erosion on the apical surface of mucosal folds and columnar epithelial cells and necrosis of CEC was also noticed. Obliteration of CEC along its entire length from basement membrane was observed in the intestinal portion. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's completely obliterates everything in the digestive system. Uh, so then we have long-term gluten consumption in adults without celiac disease and risk of coronary heart disease. Long-term dietary intake of gluten was not associated with risk of coronary heart disease. However, the avoidance of gluten may result in reduced consumption of beneficial whole grains, which may affect cardiovascular risk. So the idea that whole grains are heart healthy is actually from their liver detoxing capabilities. With all the toxins and pollutants in modern diet and lifestyle, you need a lot of fiber and starch so the toxins which are excreted by the liver do not get reabsorbed. Patients in the study which consumed less gluten, therefore less fiber and starch, had higher rates of heart disease. This points to the likelihood of extreme liver toxicity in most people, which causes increased triglyceride circulation, especially those toxic omega-6 fatty acids. So the less fiber and starch you have, you're probably gonna have more deposits of the omega-6, the inflammatory fats in the arteries. Right, our final study is risk of obesity during a gluten-free diet in pediatric and adult patients with celiac disease. Most celiac patients had a normal BMI at presentation, although the mean BMI was significantly lower than that of controls. So these celiac patients who, whose gut is already so damaged they cannot tolerate gluten and probably much other foods have lower BMI. They weigh less than the average person. Theoretically, a healthier weight. Being skinny is healthy. But to me, a skinny person who can barely eat anything just means they have serious liver damage and serious gut microbiome imbalances. The damage was probably caused by all of the toxins in our modern food and lifestyle that we've mentioned so many times this video. So the goal here should not be to follow any sort of extreme diet. It should be to detox the body from these chemicals and pollutants, go organic, eat high quality foods, balanced ratios, and then replenish the gut microbiome with high quality probiotics. And I forgot to put the final piece of wheat uh, on here. So, okay. My mediocre drawing skills, guys, it takes me forever to do these little things because I'm, I'm very unartistic. But you guys can go to frank-tofano.com if you like to support me through all of my businesses. Frank Easy Range Meat, Frank Easy Range Foods. We try to do high quality organic animal foods as well as snack foods, organ supplements. We have a lot of things that are pretty relevant here for detoxing the body, whether it's magnesium, masticum, iodine. So much to read on those websites, guys. Even if you don't buy anything, if you go on there and read the product descriptions, you're probably gonna learn quite a bit. Uh, so as usual, please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Thanks for joining, guys, and I'll see you for the next video.